Hi everybody, it's Emmy. It is June the 30th. I am back. I was out here yesterday. I'm here to do mite checks for my number one hive and my what I'm calling my Reba Grant hive. We're doing a statewide, I'm in the state of Rhode Island, we're doing a statewide mite check. It's just informal but as many beekeepers as possible are trying in the next week to do mite checks at the same time and put all of their data on a spreadsheet so we can kind of observe, you know, mite levels all over the state. And when I say mites, I mean varroa mites and varroa mite management is a really big deal when it comes to keeping honeybees and that's what I'm going to be doing today, checking out this hive right here which has successfully requeened itself as of about a week ago, that hive had seven mites in it, so I definitely need to treat that. And best practices say when you treat one hive in your apiary, you treat all of them. So I'm going to be doing oxalic acid dribble, which is a method of using oxalid in liquid form, oxalic acid, and dribbling it on the bees because uh, it's pretty fragile right now because the queen is either just newly mated or getting mated and the last thing we want to do is kill her. So this is my Reba Grant queen so I'm going to go in here check them out. I'm going to do a mite check as well even though I'm going to treat them as well. Uh, I haven't been in this hive for a couple weeks because we've been on vacation but based on just what's happening out front and when I've been feeding them they seem to be doing well in terms of population. All right so let's get into this one first. Let me show you the tools or the things I'm going to be using to do the mic check. I'm going to be doing an alcohol wash. So this has 70% ethanol or rubbing alcohol in these two bottles. I have two of them, one for each hive. Go into there, grab a frame of nurse bees, which are the younger bees. They tend to have more of a row on them. I'm going to bash them into this tub. I'm going to measure a half cup, just like you would when you're cooking. Drop them into here. The bees will be sacrificed. They will die. But it's worth doing that than losing your entire hive. So then we'll shake it into the alcohol solution and the mites will fall and then we will count them. Give them a little smoke and let them know that I'm here. I'm gonna take the heater off. Make sure the queen is not on the inner cover. And this queen is marked nice and blue and I don't see her. So I'm gonna put this Real quick, I'm going to check in this box. I added this box a few weeks ago, and I just want to see if they're drawing this out at all. These have propolized everything together, which is this resin they collect. Oh good. So that is some drawn out frames, and that is getting filled with nectar. I don't see any eggs in there. This feels nice and heavy. This looks like it's becoming a syrup frame. So when we're doing hive inspections, we're looking for a few things. We're always looking for the presence of brood, of course eggs, that means that our queen is active. We're also looking for food stores. This is all filled with syrup or nectar, which is great, but we also want to look for pollen. Girls have been very busy. There are now four complete frames that are drawn out. And when I first put this in here, this was completely empty. I'm gonna go do deeper and see if we can see signs of the queen. Okay, when you jostle the bees like that, you want to give them a puff. Give them a puff and say you're sorry. <laughs> what do I see? I see some honey stores, capped honey. Uh, I'm trying to look for brood. I think I'm going to go down the second box, down deeper for brood. Signs of brood. It's a very heavy box. Okay, so here we see some drone brood. This is a great opportunity to look for Varroa. So right here in the burr comb are drone brood. So you see those little white kind of wormy things? Drones are male bees and the Varroa mites prefer nesting or building inside the drone cells because they have a longer developing time and they are bigger. So that is a great opportunity to look for mites. There's an example of a mite. There it is, right there. Can you see that? I have to, it's a little speck. Looks almost like a sesame seed. And I see eggs. So we're always looking for our queen. I see some drones. And I do see some eggs, which is great. That means my queen is active. Good laying pattern, great. Decent brood pattern and when there are holes, there are new larvae developing, and in the ones that are empty are eggs, which is great. 
Nice solid brood pattern there as well. I don't, I do see some pollen. Um, developing larva, larva of all stages. Looks great. And what else am I looking for? We have honey or nectar stores on the outside, which is great. These girls could probably use a little bit of pollen. I do see some pollen stores, but not a whole lot. Very nice brood pattern. Let's check that cup right there. See if there's anything in it. It's empty. Bees oftentimes make those cups in preparation. We just want to make sure there's no egg in there. That would be a swarm cup if there was an egg or brood in there. So once you see eggs, then you know that the queen was here at least three days ago. And if you don't see her, it's fine. So that's good. There's another cup. Let's make sure that there's nothing in it. Oh, empty. This is all open, so that means the brood has recently hatched. Brood means baby bees, and each cell is filled with an egg. So this is great. That means the queen has been doing her job, and there's developing brood on this side. Now, I want to make sure that the queen is not on this frame, because this is these are nurse bees, and these are the bees that I will use for my mite check. Make sure we do not see the queen. We don't want to kill the queen. She's a beautiful queen and she's a great lair. So this queen, queen is got a bright blue dot on it. And uh, I don't see her. There's a drone in there, a couple bees in there. So I know no queen is on there. I've looked at it four times. These are all nurse bees because they are tending to developing larvae and eggs. Those are the bees that are most are the youngest and they'll be the most likely to have varroa on them. So, check one more time to make sure the queen is not on there. We're gonna shake them out into this dish. Put these back, pack them into the corner. Scoop a half cup into the jar. Put them up. Now those bees will just return back to their hive on their own. So let's just put this back together. So same thing in this hive. We're just gonna check on the queen and grab a sample of bees. And I see capped. This will give us an idea of the queen's laying pattern. Much easier to tell when they're capped. It's good. Oh, I see some cups down below. That's not good. Let's see if there's any eggs in there. Those are swarm cells. Empty. This hive just requeened. And that cup had an egg in it. These girls want to swarm again? Why? So I'm going to remove those cups, pinch those, and see what else is in here. So I'm going to delve further into this and see if there's any developed swarm cells in here. That is a frame of eggs. So I don't see the queen on that frame, so I'm going to go ahead and get my sample. Queen is not marked, so I have to be very careful I don't accidentally kill my queen. So shake them out, bash them down, pass up the bees, button them up. Now I gotta go through this and make sure there's no other swarm cells. Okay, so got into hive number one, got my sample of nurse bees, but I did find two queen cups with eggs in them, not developed at all. But that indicates they want to swarm. And why they want to swarm now, I have no idea. I'll have to talk to my mentor, ask the bee club what they think. This hive just recently requeened as of about 10 days ago. So why are they thinking of swarming? Fall flow hasn't started or maybe it has. So I definitely have to keep an eye on this. If they start developing more queen cells, I'll try to split them again, I guess, to do a preemptive um, strike against swarming and uh, yeah, never a dull moment in beekeeping. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. When you shake, that's when you see the varroa. There we go. See that? Three so far. Four. Five, six. Seven, eight. Definitely need a treat. In the glass. Ten. Ten mites. 
So always shake. The alcohol is clear, but the mites are there. Okay, so this is hive number two. This is the Reba hive that was made from a split from the original mother hive. Three, four, five, six. This shaking is crucial. Four right there, and there are two floating in the jar for a total of six. So I'm back and it is still July 30th. I just went into my hive earlier today and did a quick mic check, alcohol wash, and found that all of my hives need to be treated. Best practices actually say that once you have an infected hive, you probably should treat all of the hives in your apiary. So number one hive actually has the most mites, it has 11 mites, so I'm going to treat that with Mite Away Quick Strips as I am with my Reba number two hive. That one I'm actually going to do the full treatment, which is two strips. Mite Away Quick Strips are formic acid. You can actually leave your honey supers on. It doesn't affect the honey. The trick is you have to do it during a certain window of time when it comes to temperature. So it's relatively cool today and the next seven days are going to be below 92 degrees Fahrenheit, which makes it okay to use it. Any hotter than 92 degrees, you risk uh, really damaging the bees to the point you might lose your queen, so on and so forth. So that's why I'm back out here today to quickly do this because with the weather you just never know. Um, as far as my number one hive, that just recently requeened, so I'm going to just put one strip down and then follow up in two weeks. This is the second treatment method that they have labeled on the box, and then in two weeks, in 14 days, I will put the second strip down, and that's a way to kind of temper the amount of dosage in terms of the formic acid, because that's a relatively small hive compared to the, the big Reba hive, and uh, yeah, we don't want to you know, cause any more damage. Also, that is a weakened hive, even though that has the highest number of mites. But again, I want to quickly treat as soon as possible because the formic acid strips are dependent on weather temperature. So these are the ones that I'm going to be using. These are called Mite Away Quick Strips. I used them last year with great success. Uh, again, you just have to check on the weather. I have an empty super here. So this is just some fairly drawn foundation mostly just foundation, but I'm gonna add that to here. I'm gonna take off the feeder. You're not supposed to be feeding during treatment. And I'm gonna put this empty super on top so that when the vapors rise, the bees have a place to retreat to. This hive, on the other hand, I'm gonna be treating with oxalic acid in one-to-one -one syrup. And I have a video for that. I'll put the link down below to that video. That's usually done in the winter time as a winter treatment. But I'm opting for oxalic acid for the nuke because right now it's queenless. It's actually in the period of requeening itself and it's just a fragile situation. There are not a lot of bees in there as well. So that is gonna be the last, the least likely to make things damaging for the small nucleus colony. So after a few recommendations from club members, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. But I'm gonna wait till actually there is some brood that hasn't hatched yet, so I'm going to give it a couple days for those brood to hatch because that's actually where the mites live. So the mites actually live under the capped brood, and so the Mite Away Quick Strips, the formic acid actually goes through and through the cappings and actually can kill them underneath the cappings. The oxalic acid, on the other hand, at least in this dribble form, does not. Actually, in the vapor form, it does not as well. So that's the reason why that treatment is used when the colony is pretty much broodless or there are no baby bees around or any capped bees around because there'll be some mites that do not get killed. But it is most gentle in terms of we don't know the status of my queen, I don't know if she's out flying around or if... So it's a tenuous situation so I'm going to opt with that but I'm going to check on the brood and see if they've hatched. I just checked on them yesterday and I don't think so. It's hard to tell when they're going to hatch or not but um, once they've hatched then I'm going to treat them with the oxalic acid. All right. <laughs> Let's get in there. So during treatment, the instructions say to remove any barriers so there's free ventilation. So I'm going to remove this rubber screen. In there. So there are the bees. This is in between brood box one and two. And I'm going to smoke them down. In each pack comes with two strips. And you Treatment is seven days. Keep the paper on them. I'm not gonna like this bees, but we're gonna put them in the middle right here. Kind of stagger them. They're immediately running away from them because they know that it's gross.
Это... So, giving them this extra box for them to run to if they need to escape the vapors. This is just empty. So, we hate to over-treat, but when levels are high enough, we must. But we don't want to do it unnecessarily. So, there we go. So, number one is done. Let's go do... Well, that's actually number two. This is the Reba Grant Queen. So, let's go do the... Which was once my main hive here. It has swarmed at least twice, I think. And it's been through a lot. So... The colony size is much diminished, and they've just recently requeened. So I'm only going to give them one strip, and then in two weeks' time, I'm going to add another Mite Away Quick Strip. But this hive actually has the highest numbers. It has 11, so it's important to start treating right away. Okay, so again, I'm going to put the strip between here. This is brood chamber one and two. This one doesn't need additional super because there's supers on here already. So yeah, same thing. So most of these bees are in the first six frames here. They're already responding to it. They don't like it. So, June 30th, and I just went into the split to see how much capped brood there is, and I just spotted the Virgin Queen. So, let's see if I can find her. There she is. Can you see her? Right there. Wait, is that her? Yes, you can see that she has golden legs. She's right there, Virgin Queen. And right here is another supersedure cell that's about, that just hatched? Yes, that just hatched. I don't think that's the queen in there. So, I don't hear any, there's the queen. You can really get to see her now. Now her abdomen looks pretty long. I wonder if she's mated. So since this is, open, she might have killed that queen inside there. Where did she go? I love beekeeping. It's so cool. Okay, there she is right there. There she is. She's sticking her tail in there. Did you see that? I think she might be mated. She's sticking her tail. Her abdomen looks pretty long. see what she's gonna do here. Let's see what she's gonna do. So cool. So now this hive has a queen. I just don't know if she's made it yet. She looks pretty fatty though. She's sticking her tail in. If she's sticking her tail in, that means she's trying to lay. So cool. I wish I had a pen, I would mark her right now. There she is, right under there. Let's just take a look at the other frames and see if how the other supersedure cells are looking. And if she chewed those ones out, then it's a good chance that she's the one. Look at this bee. Isn't that bee interesting? Okay, where'd she go? Okay, I lost her. Oh, there she is, right there, I think. Yeah, right there. See her? She's got golden legs. Right there. And the top part of her, uh, I don't know if you got thorax is dark and kind of bald. 
She actually doesn't look that fat, so maybe she's not mated. All right, let's keep looking in here. So just yesterday I put these, hang on. Super seed yourself here has not hatched yet, but it looks like it's about to. See that beautiful peanut? So she hasn't found that one yet, or... Sorry girls. So there's still some patches of brood here that have not hatched. So that's probably where the mites are. So I shouldn't treat with oxalic acid just yet. Mm -hmm.